Reading with your kids. Hola, Niho, Kunichiwa, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom, Mahaba, Boni Muli Wanji, Namaste, Jambo, Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jedley, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reeville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. Thank you so very much for joining us in our mission to help families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you find your podcasts. Our guest today is Lisa McMahon. She is here to celebrate her middle grade novel, Clarice the Brave. Before we invite Lisa in the studio to celebrate Clarice the Brave, we would love to celebrate connecting with you on social media. Facebook.com slash Reading With Your Kids. At Reading With Your Kids on Instagram. At Jedly Magic on Twitter. And also check out our fantastic Pinterest page, which is titled Reading With Your Kids. We can also invite you to visit our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Once you're there, you can sign up for our free newsletter, and you can also contact us by clicking the contact button. We love hearing from our listeners. Join us right now from British Columbia. Our guest today is the author of a brand new middle grade novel. It's called Clarice the Brave. Please welcome to the show, Lisa McMahon, the author. Hey, Lisa, how are you? I am great, and I am so happy to be here with you today. Well, I'm excited to have you on. I'm really excited for you to tell us all about Clarice the Brave. Well, I would be happy to. You know, Clarice the Brave is my 27th book. I know. And it is just this huge piece of my heart. Like... I thought I was putting my entire heart into every book I wrote. And then I started writing Clarice the Brave. And it's the story of sibling mice, a brother and a sister. And they are ship mice. They live aboard a ship. And this takes place maybe in the 1800s. But they don't know. Um... Clarice and her brother, Charles Sebastian, are the only ones left of their family. And they are caught up in a mutiny on the ship. And they're separated. And Clarice gets thrown into the lifeboat with the captain, who's being sent off by the crew. And... Charles Sebastian is left stuck on the ship. And as these two boats are drifting apart, they're calling to each other across the waves and saying, I'm going to find you again. You know, against all the odds. And that's how the book begins with the separation. Wow. Wow. Such a traumatic beginning to the book too when you're thinking about that time and those circumstances you know I'm, I'm imagining looking at your sibling that you love so much and thinking about the real possibility that you'll never see that person ever again yeah and those thoughts cross the minds of both mice you know they're saying these words And they're not sure they can believe them. They're saying, I'll see you again. And inside they're going, I'm not so sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And they do a lot of reflection too. You know, they, they think about the family they've lost in the past. Uh, Clarice and Charles Sebastian, like I said, are the, the last two of their family. The rest of the litter has died either by disease or by, uh, cat, um, and their mother was washed off the ship by a rogue, a rogue wave. And so they've seen a lot in their young lives. Um, but that's sort of a normal life for a mouse. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so they're clinging to each other, maybe even more than, um, than you would if you had a, a, a bigger family. You know, every loss is immense, but 
the fact that they're the last two means something to both of them. What inspired this book? A lot of things. Uh, it was, I've always wanted to write a book, an animal journey book. And I've always loved ship books, books that take place on a ship um, with sailors and, you know, pirates and stuff like that. But this is not a pirate book. Um, this is, it, you know, so I, there's, there was um, influence uh, by Captain Bly, the story of Captain Bly and the mutiny there, which became Mutiny on the Bounty. There was a, that's a movie and a book based on that story of Captain Bly, uh, who was sent off in on a launch boat by the sailors who were fed up with him and they wanted to get rid of him. I loved that story. Um, but I also loved animal journey stories like Watership Down and The Incredible Journey. Uh, and, uh, you know, these animals who have to overcome so many odds, way more than humans, you know, they're in way more trouble than humans are on the planet. And, uh, it was it was a combination of the love of the ships and the love of the animal journey story that really inspired me to write the first couple of chapters. But I did that while I was writing another series, the Unwanted series. Uh, and so I didn't have time to really work on that book. But I wrote the first two chapters and I was like, this is this is a good book. I'm going to hang on to this. And then about two or three years ago, I was finishing up the Unwanted series, and we were also getting a lot of news about children being separated from their parents at the border of the U.S. and Mexico. And as a mom, that just broke my heart, you know, hearing these stories about these kids who were in this foreign place and being taken from their parents. And so that was basically the, the first catalyst that got me thinking again about this book and the separation that these mice were going to go through. And, you know, I felt like I couldn't do anything about what was going on at the border. Me alone, I couldn't do anything, but I could write. I could write a story about separation and about hope of reuniting. And so I, I started writing that. And as I was finishing that book, we fa faced another kind of separation through COVID. People were separated from their families again in a different way. And that it spurred me on even more to continue writing this book. Um, so those were all the things that sort of came together uh, as inspiration for Clarice the Brave. Yeah. You were sharing with me that you, because of COVID and because of the borders being closed, you were separated from your daughter for a very long time. How did that affect the story as you were finishing, finishing up? It affected it a lot. I mean, I was thinking about my daughter. I kept checking the news trying to figure out when I was going to be able to see her. See, she could come home to us, to the United States. They would have allowed that. But the second she crosses the border, when she goes back to Canada to work, she would have to quarantine for two weeks. And so she wouldn't, she didn't have that time in her schedule to be able to do that. Uh, until this past May is when she was finally able to have a break and, and come and see us for a few days. So that was wonderful. But we weren't able to go into Canada mm -hmm. for, you know, 17 months. Wow. It puts things in perspective when we can kind of put ourselves into in, into the lives of somebody else or, or look at the world through somebody else's eyes. I think that's such an important thing for all of us to do, but I think it's something really important for us to talk to our kids about and encourage our kids to do. You, you mentioned the, uh, you know, the the what was happening at the Mexican border, Mexican United States border. 
no matter where you fall on the issue, I think it's really important to put yourself into the shoes, into the hearts of the people that are being directly affected. Because to them, it's not a political issue. It's their life. Exactly. It is. And, you know, thinking back, I think every parent feels that. Like, what would I do? You know, my grandparents were immigrants to Mm -hmm. the United States. And I imagine they didn't have any children at the time. They were a young couple. But I imagined what would happen if something like that happened to them. And uh, it's just, it's, it doesn't matter your political beliefs. It's, it's your parental feelings Mm -hmm. about your child and even the children being separated from their siblings too. You know, I just think about those kids and that just really gave me, you know, the depth or, you know, the, yeah, I guess the depth is what I'm thinking for the feelings that Clarice and Charles Sebastian were experiencing at yeah. this moment. You know, as you were mentioning that, I had this – my mind is weird. I Things just <laughs> cause other things to flash back in my mind. And as you're talking about, you know, parental feelings and how would you feel being separated, I remember – Walking um, across the the friendship, I think it's called the Friendship Bridge or the Peace Bridge in uh, in upstate New York at Niagara Falls, and walking into Canada, and the uh, border, the Canadian border uh, agent saying, looking at my then year old son, and saying, "Who does that child belong to?" Mm. And Obviously, it was an easy answer, you know, it's our kid and whatever. We get paperwork, I think. <laughs> but it was the, the the way he stated it, um, just the words, who does that child, but it's, it's my child. It belongs to the world, but he's my child. And, you know, to have your, I, I think that was the first and thankfully only time my parentage was ever challenged. And it didn't feel comfortable. Sure. No, it doesn't because you almost think, who are you to ask me that? Yes. Yeah. Who else's child would it be? (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, What other kind of things do you think a family, because we are all about, we're all about kids reading independently, of course, and we want to encourage that. But, you know, as parents, you know, as we want to be able to hold on to our kids when they're facing danger, um, thankfully, not many of our kids are going to be facing the kind of danger that your ship mice are, are going to be facing. And thankfully, most of our kids won't be torn away from us. But our kids are separated from us naturally by time. As they grow older, they have not they have a desire to spread their wings and to move away from us. Elisa and I were talking about, you know, how anxious we were to go out on our own when we were in our late teens. Um I know a lot of parents that want to keep that and keep connected with their kids, keep that tight bond with their kids as long as they can. Reading with our kids as they become readers is a great way to extend that time, having those conversations. We're not maybe reading Clarice the Brave aloud to our kids, although that would be a fun thing to do, but definitely reading, co-reading and sitting down and talking about what's going on in the books is a a great way to maintain that bond. What what kind of other things, other than that whole feeling of being separated from family, what kind of things do you think families could talk about as they're reading Clarice the Brave? You know, there are some unlikely friendships in this book. It's, and talking about friendships with people you maybe don't naturally look to, um, when you're starting school for the first time or when you're, you know, you're, it, my kids, we moved when they were 11 and 8 and starting in a brand new city in a brand new school for the first time when you're not just entering kindergarten, but older. Um, unlikely friendships. I love building those kinds of 
stories, those kinds of storylines. Uh, and both Clarice and Charles Sebastian build an unlikely friendship um, throughout the story. And, uh, you know, I think that's something that we can teach our kids and we can talk to our kids about that. Sure, you've got these friends at school who, you know, maybe even look like you, but maybe look at seeing who else is out there to be an ally for you, a friend for you. And uh, so that's one topic I think that I would talk about with my kids if I were reading this book aloud. Um, you know, there's a lot of hope in this story. Believing in yourself um, and believing in others. And that can be hard, especially for these mice who've lost everyone in their family. They are very suspicious. They're, they don't trust anyone and they're scared. But they learn through the separation that they can count on others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I love that you mentioned unlikely friendships. As, as you're speaking, I realized my life, some of my best moments were built on unlikely friendships. Yeah. Most people would say that my beautiful wife and I, that's probably the most unlikeliest of friendships. And it's <laughs> such a blessing. Oh, I feel that, you know, it was funny. My husband and I have been married 30 years and we were just, we were so young. We were just <laughs> talking about how I, we only dated a few times and I was ready to end it. And we laugh about this a lot. Um, and then something tragic happened in his life and I felt like, oh, I can't break this yeah. off right now. <laughs> you know, that would be horrible. <laughs> And so I didn't. And then this thing grew out of that, you know, this wonderful relationship and friendship and, and you know, he's my best friend. And I'm so glad I didn't break up with him. <laughs> it came this close. It came so close. <laughs> well, that's, that's, I'm, I'm really happy that you didn't end that friendship, and congratulations on 30 years. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Absolutely. It is. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I, I, I didn't want to uh, miss an opportunity just to have you tell us a little bit about your Unwanted unwanted Quest series. Sure. Uh, so the Unwanted Quest is uh, a seven-book series. It's the sequel series to the original The Unwanted's books. So there's actually 14 books in all in this world. Um, and The Unwanted, the original book, begins um, in the world of Quill, which is a dystopian world. And it's against the law to be creative. And if you're caught as a kid doing something creative, like singing or dancing or, you know, telling a story or even drawing in the dirt with a stick, uh, if you get caught doing something like that as a kid, at the age of 13, you are considered unwanted and you're sent to your death. And, I mean, obviously, you know, they don't die because otherwise it'd be a really short book. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> luckily something else happens. They find themselves, these unwanted, find themselves in a magical world. And it turns out that the guy who's supposed to be putting them to death has secretly been saving and hiding these unwanted children for years and teaching them to do uh, magic with their creativity. And uh, they do that for fun, but also to protect themselves in case they ever get discovered and have to fight. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. What, a, what a fun series. Oh, it was so much fun. I enjoyed every single book. I never thought I could write 14 books in one world with the same characters and I was sad to say goodbye. Yeah. How did you make that choice to, to say goodbye? I felt like the story was done. Mm -hmm. um, I had the, the ending in mind for so many years. And once we got to uh, the end of the Unwanted's quests, and I felt like most of the things had naturally wrapped up. And I didn't want to extend it. Um, when I didn't need to. 
so I, when I got to that last book of the Unwanted's Quests, I wrote the very ending first because okay. it had been in my mind all this time. And when I wrote it, it felt good. It felt right. So I knew it was time to be done with that. Wow. Oh, that's, that's fascinating. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to imagine myself writing a series, 14 different books, and then knowing or having the courage actually to say, it's time. It's time to say goodbye. I, I, I'm sure that there was a lot of pressure on you to keep on going. I do hear that from the fans. They, mm-hmm. they're they wondering if a third series is coming. And, you know, I never say never, but I'm not planning on it. Yeah. I think we're done. Do you look forward to writing another long series like that? Or is your future going to be writing standalone books like Clarice the Brave? I think that there is a new <laughs> series coming up. Ooh. So I don't think that. I know that. Okay. Um, yes. In fact, uh, I just announced it in my newsletter uh, yesterday. It just came out. Uh, the cover came out. And the brand new series is called uh, The Forgotten Five. And it is about five kids who were uh, supernatural. And they were raised on a deserted island by their criminal supernatural parents. And then a few years ago, those parents left. And now the kids are um, trying to decide what to do. Should we go to civilization, which they've never seen or experienced? They don't know how electricity works or what, you know, they know what cell phones are, but they've never used Mm -hmm. one. Um, Should we go there and try and find our parents and see what happened to them? And so the first book is called Map of Flames. And it comes out in February. Awesome. Well, we're going to uh, extend an invitation for you to come back in the spring and celebrate that new series and that new book. I would love to. Awesome. Well, in the meantime, I know people are going to want to know where they can go to find out more about Clarice the Brave and everything coming from the mind of Lisa McMahon. They can go to my website, lisamcmahon.com. I'm also active on Instagram, and Twitter uh, with the handle Lisa underscore McMahon. And I have a couple of Facebook pages as well. There's a page for the Unwanted series. There is a page called McMahon Fan, where um, that's probably the best place if you want to learn more about my different books. Uh, So those are the best places to find me. Awesome. Well, we know that people are going to want to go out there and check out Clarice the Brave, the brand new middle grade novel from our guest, Lisa McMahon. Hey, Lisa, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a a pleasure. I've listened to your show and I love it. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. We have a fantastic surprise guest for you. You don't want to miss it. Hey, if you're the author of a fantastic children's book, we would love to help you tell the world all about it. There's so many ways that we can help. You can be a guest on the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Being a guest, it's fun. It's easy. It gives you the chance to tell thousands of people about your fantastic book and... It doesn't cost a thing. No need to pay anybody to facilitate your visit. We can also invite you to submit your book to our Certified Great Read program. If our panel believes that your book is worthy of four or five out of five stars, it becomes a Certified Great Read. And with that status comes a number of really powerful tools to let parents know that your book is worthy of their attention. We also have some really incredible promotional programs that you can check out that combine commercials on the podcast, blast to our social media following, and getting your book and your message on a nationwide network of pedestrian billboards. You can learn all about these services and more at our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Click on the author's click here button at the top of the page. Scroll on down to our various services. Want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. 
course, we want to start by thanking our guest, Lisa McMahon. Please be sure to check out Clarice the Brave. Also want to thank my team, Alejandro Doherty, Fatima Khan, Rory Grady, Michael Murphy. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast. 